pay attention. We're gonna cover things no one else has taught you. I've seen people literally lose businesses, all because they weren't aware of some of the things I'm about to show you. Spending months of time and thousands of dollars, not knowing they were set up for failure the entire time. It's like setting out to bake a cake with salt instead of sugar. Sure, you'll end up with something, just nothing anyone wants. Actually, it's more like a condom with a hole in it. You thought you were making the right decision. You thought you were doing everything right, feeling good about your decisions. Then nine months later, <coughs> surprise, she got your ass, bro. Child support, next 18 years. And that's how bad the mistake is I'm about to show you. So when you first start a local site, you know, whether it's for a client or your own business, many of the times it can be started on a new domain. I've seen the 18 years of child support problem bite a lot of people in the ass right here, dead before they even realize it. People will go out and find a great domain, many times one with keywords in it, because that's what still works very well. They go through the whole rest of the process. They do everything right, but the site never ranks, and they have no idea why. Why are you the way that you are? I've seen this happen many times. It's really painful to see a student go through nine months of time, thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars, and fail because they missed this step. So what did they do wrong? they forgot to check the history of the domain. See, most people just go and look for a domain name and when they see it's available, they get super pumped. The domain they want is there. They go and they grab it and they get to work. The problem is there's something called an expired domain. Just because a domain is available at a domain registrar does not mean that it's a brand new domain, does not mean that it's a healthy domain, and does not mean that it doesn't have a bad history behind it. Let me give you an example. So if I go to namecheap.com, which is a domain registrar, one of my favorites, and we go search for frenchescleaners.com. Let's say the cleaning name was French's and you know we wanted cleaners in there, of course, because that's a key word. And we go and we search, we're like, please be available, please be available, please be available. Yes, it's available. Add to my cart, purchase, let's get to work. Major problem, okay? We need to make sure we check the history of this domain first. So I always check in a dress, but you can really use any tool you want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Ahrefs, I'm gonna throw in this tool, and I'm gonna go to the overview first, and we're gonna see it has a history, all right? We can see it has a traffic history and keyword history, and the main thing I'm looking at is the link history as well. At one time, this domain had 131 referring domains. Now, a lot of those are gone, it only has six referring domains now, but the point is, this site still has a history, okay? And this is this could be not a very good thing for most people, especially if you don't know how to analyze a website. And even if you do, there could be hidden things that are affecting this website that we're unaware of. So you have to be very careful if a domain has a history, even if the links don't look that bad. As we can go here, these links aren't horrible. Like there is stuff about French's dry cleaners in here, which is what I really want to see. But there is a few other links that kind of don't really make sense as well. So although this domain looks like it could be okay, it doesn't mean it is, and it does have a history. So that's the first step. If you're getting a brand new domain, you must check the history. Do not shoot yourself in the foot before you get started. Make sure that condom has no holes in it, sir. Very costly mistake. Now, if you're working with an existing domain, like an existing business who already has a domain name, you obviously have to analyze the domain and the history of that domain as well. And if you don't know how to do that, you need to subscribe. I cover this stuff all the time, but I'll still give you a quick overview. Let me show you what you want to look at. All right, so I picked a random site here, drrowrich.com, and this guy's ranking well for Dallas Plastic Surgeon. So obviously his stuff's going to look all good, but I'm just going to use this site as an example of what you want to look for because he has a lot of good things going on here that I can kind of point out. So the first thing is he has 367 referring domains, which I like to see, right? He has a good amount of referring domains. As long as the, the backlinks that are there are good backlinks, that's a very good thing. He also has a lot of organic traffic. That's a great thing to see. If a site is already getting organic traffic, especially if they're getting a good amount of it, like in the thousands, that is an awesome sign. That means Google likes this website and we're in good hands here. Okay, It's going to be a healthy website that we can really improve on. So these are definitely things you initially want to look at. Now, one of the main things I look at is the actual backlinks, especially if the traffic's lower. Uh, you really want to focus on what's in the backlinks. Now, if you've been following my teachings on this channel, you know that my on-page teachings are that you need to focus on the basics, right? The on-page basics are, you know, get your keywords in your domain or URL and in your title. Those are the three big spots. Well, when it comes to links pointing to the website we're analyzing, we want to see these, those three factors in reverse, 
What I mean is we want to see keywords in the titles, the domain, or the URLs of the links pointing to us. The way that Google reads data is if they can read a site is about plastic surgery that's pointing to a site they know is about plastic surgery, it's going to get a lot of credit. Yes, Google can determine relevancy without specifically reading a keyword in the title URL or domain, but if it's in one of those important places, it's going to help them know even more so that it's about that topic, so you're going to get more credit for it. So what I want to do is light up some keywords on the left side. So I do, go do a control F to look for keywords. And when I look for plastic, you'll notice on the left side over here in the metadata of the links pointing to the website we're analyzing, I'm going to see a lot of yellow highlighting. And that's what I want because this shows me these are relevant links related to plastic surgery. Another word I can do is surgeon, right? Because it's also a plastic surgeon. Again, as I scroll down, a lot of stuff in the left is highlighted, which shows me these are really high quality links when it comes to relevancy. Last one is Dallas because this, this surgeon is in Dallas. So we want to see Dallas in some of the metadata of the links pointing to our website. As I scroll down, we see a decent amount of Dallas lit up, and that is exactly what I want to see. Of course, the domain rating of the links also matter, but the main thing I want to see is that relevancy. Now, if we have high domain rating links with relevancy, that is a super big factor. So for example, this link right here is an 84 domain rating, and it has plastic surgery in the domain name, which is the biggest ranking factor on page. So when you reverse it to the off page, you know, to the, to the link data pointing to your site, that's like the biggest factor we can get from a high quality link. So it's no wonder these guys are ranking number one for Dallas Plastic Surgeon. They have really high quality links. And on top of that, they even have high domain authority links with high relevancy. That is a very important sign. The last thing I would want to look for is to see if they have citations built to the website. Now, these guys have a lot of links, so we're not going to go look. But you're looking for links from places like Yelp.com and Super Pages and Yellow Pages and things like that. And we'll cover that more in just a second. Now, from here, we want to make sure we have our Google business profile set up as soon as possible. To do this, you just go to google.com slash business. The maps listing is essential. That must be your number one focus. 95, 98 99% of the calls are going to come from the maps listing. Get it set up and then go watch my other videos on how to rank maps. From there, we're going to make sure our citations are in order. And again, remember citations are listings on places like Yelp and whatnot. A good option for beginners is brightlocal.com. Uh, they do a very good job. They are a little more expensive, but they're very thorough. And uh, White Spark is another good one as well. And I'll also give you some cheaper options. Obviously, you know, you can go do them yourself as well. You can just go Google something like, you know, list of citation websites for local, and you'll get a whole list of websites that you can go and manually submit your citations to. It does take time, but it will save you a little bit of money. Then there are services that are a lot cheaper and still do a really good job, like Marketer Center. And that is marketers with an S, center.com. I have actually used them quite a bit in the past for all different kinds of services. They even do things like citation audits and citation cleanups, which can be really, really helpful, especially for beginners. Once your citations are all taken care of, you then want to put your focus back on making sure that GBP gets approved. That again is focus number one. It's partly a waiting game, but you want to make sure you do everything on your end to not hold it up, right? Do everything as quick as possible on your end. You can't control how long they take, but you can control how long you take, so get it done. Now, the next step from here just depends on the size and the budget of the client. If it's just a small to medium-sized local client in one area, honestly, at this point, I'm chilling. I may be doing a little bit of like content-related stuff and interlinking and, and you know getting some on-page stuff right, the, the basics I talk about. But again, it's just waiting until that maps listing is approved till I really get moving anymore. Now, once the listing does get approved, you want to get reviews as soon as possible. There's a lot of different ways to kind of get this done, but you definitely want to have a review funnel in place for either your own business, whether it's your business or for the client's business. Again, priority number one here. Now, if it's a national client, I'm going to do other things like build the authority of the website, but I'm also going to be focusing on getting as many maps listing as possible. We've worked with clients that have done like three month office rentals only for the purpose to get a maps listing approved. So yes, they are that important. And that's really how you want to start every single local SEO project you do. Know that most of your results when it comes to local are going to come from the maps. And also understand this. I always go by the data. I don't particularly know if a bad domain history plays into the rankings in maps. I know it does organically. I'm not 100% sure about the map side. And that's simply because I don't have the data for it, right? I don't have a history of getting bad domains and, and comparing it to the maps rankings because I choose to just get good domains. 
Now, before, like many years ago, organic uh, list rankings were, were a lot more important. So this was even more important back then, but it's still important. It's like my view on that is why take the chance? You know, get a domain that you know is 100% healthy. A bad domain history may not affect the map's rankings, but why include that variable if you don't have to? For almost all of you, it would probably be smarter to just choose a domain that has no history at all. What I mean is if you find a good domain and it seems to have a good history, like you see some links there and you know it was owned before, even if the history looks good, you may just want to pass on to it and go to one that has been never owned before. Remember, those condoms with holes in it can be the size of a pinpoint. Leave a comment. Let me know what you want videos on. I'm always watching. Subscribe. Talk soon.